motto of the, this event is uh, dealing with cyber disruption. What does it mean to you as a scientist? Well, cyber disruption is is happening at a really rapid pace now. Probably, I mean, I've been working in, in AI-related fields for nearly four decades now, but it's the last decade has really accelerated change. And I'm seeing disruption in so many things, even penetrating into things like childcare, elder care, transport, uh, general jobs. And we haven't seen the end of it yet. What we're seeing is a massive development. I mean, cyber disruption, I mean, look at, look at this thing I've got in my pocket and the number of apps I've got in there. And I would be, I've, I, I've been to the station and, and, you know, put my hand in my pocket and my phone isn't with me and I think I have to go home again even if I miss my train because I cannot cope with the day without it. I've got my maps, all my contacts, my email, my phone. So we've got that kind of thing happening. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it, that, that's quite good. But nonetheless, there's lots of other disruption in our lives that, that might not be good. And it's not about the applications themselves, it's about how they're used. So I would say it's more about human disruption that I'm disturbed about, about how humans are applying the technology. And for me, I'm concerned about how much control we give to these systems. In the medical domain, for instance, uh, we use statistical analysis machines to say whether someone will, what's the likelihood of them coming out of a, out of a coma? And people say that saves a lot of money because then you switch them off. And I would be really against the idea, for instance, of the machines doing the switching off, that it should always be humans in control and humans accountable for anything happening in our lives. And one of the biggest things we're seeing, I'm sorry this is going on too long, but one of the biggest things we're seeing now is uh, gender bias and race bias in our algorithms because we train them on big data, on machines that are not transparent. The big data is historical and in that historical data we, we have not got good values in there particularly. We're a progressive world now, we're moving towards equality of gender, equality of race, but the big old-fashioned data doesn't have that. And these algorithms are being used to determine whether you get a mortgage, whether you get insurance, how long you'll spend in prison if you've committed a crime, all these things, and they've shown, been shown to be very biased, and we've got to do something about that and stop that disruption in particular. Do you think that artificial intelligence in the future can threat uh, human beings? Artificial intelligence is already posing a threat to humans uh, in many walks of life, as I explained about the kind of bias that, that's involved with it. Um, and also, we have at the moment strong development in United States, Russia, China and Israel, and a little bit in the UK, on weapon systems that are fully autonomous. And that's not big robots, it's tanks. Uh, ships, battleships, uh, submarines and aircraft and the idea is that they can go out, find their own targets and kill them without human intervention and I'm certainly part of a major campaign at the United Nations and we're making progress to try and get a new international treaty to prohibit any machine from making a decision that will affect it, will, it will kill a human. So, so there's, that's the biggest threat to me at the moment. Okay, and what are the opportunities in that field? There are so many opportunities that will give us, I mean, I'm optimistic about a lot of AI. I mean, we're moving into climate change in a big way now. And I can see that AI systems and robotics are going to be so beneficial to us. Working out, we've got, we've got a lot of agricultural robots now and AI systems operating them make food efficiency much better, make sure that we have enough water. It can't solve all the problems, but we're really going to need it. It's another edition of CyberSec. What do you think about the organization of that event? Well, the organization has been very good, but I'm particularly excited to be here. I've never been in Poland before. Uh, and I arrived yesterday and found the Mavido cocktail bar last night I went to because it's supposed to be your best. And I, I just find the people very friendly, really, really helpful. And the, the conference itself is running very, very smoothly. I mean, I've been to an awful lot of big conferences. You have a massive number of delegates to deal with. And yet I felt dealt with very personally myself.